the Holy Spirit has put in my heart to speak regarding the Hebrew calendar and uh, mercy over, you know, what calendar is more accurate. There's the Enoch calendar. Um, I don't know a lot about the Enoch calendar. I know how it worked of Enoch. It wasn't written by Enoch. Uh, but uh, the Enoch that they're speaking regarding, uh, that people think it is, the Hebrew calendar, they say, is not as accurate. They say the Enoch calendar is more accurate. Um, I did just really quick research, 10 minutes, and uh, the Iranian calendar is actually the most accurate, is what they say. So the Enoch calendar is, is a great calendar. It's it's amazing calendar. And uh, what it does, it has 30 point, a whole bunch of threes, uh, uh, days in a month. It works on 364 days. Every four days, it loses. It loses. It just gets off the dial a little bit, a hair or so, you know, every year. After four years, it's it actually a day passes. And so they have to add a, a, a day. That's a leap year. Now, in the, the Bible speaks regarding the new moons and um, I would have to really look at at the scriptures uh, and and specifically search and ask the Holy Spirit to show me where, if mentioned at all in the Bible, where they are to add a month at the end of the Hebrew year. Um, now, I do have a report regarding the Hebrew calendar. Uh, I mention it uh, in a few different several reports regarding what the Hebrew calendar is, and uh, the Hebrew calendar has been mishandled. It's been abused, and however, the Hebrew calendar is a um, a soul manufacturing plant. Okay, the Hebrew calendar is like a blood cell. Uh, the the blood cell is um, a um, a manufacturing plant, okay? The messenger RNA, the DNA, it makes the DNA strand, brings the, brings the information to the DNA strand, and then the, 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 there's nucleotides, there's mitochondria, there's a nucleus, there's a chromosomes, uh, there's all these different components. They're working together. They, 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 they make the DNA, and then the messenger RNA brings the strand and adds it on to the DNA. And so you have growth and you have manufacturing. It's manufacturing. It's amazing. Absolutely astounding. Well, the Hebrew calendar is based in the exact same way. So when God created the Hebrew calendar, I mean, the Hebrew calendar is, is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, you'll find it, 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 God created it for his covenant. You see, he created it for a specific people. And uh, the Iranian calendar was created for a specific people. The Mayan calendar was created, was given to a specific people. The Enoch calendar, which is also accurate for specific people. Uh, however, the Hebrew calendar is the only calendar that shows the feast days of God, you know. And God speaks regarding the Hebrew calendar, the 50 days from Passover to Pentecost, and, and then the... Uh, the, the, the feast and then the day of atonement and then the latter grapes, the snow, the wind, the grass after the rain, the winter figs and the almond blossoms. And um, the Hebrews, uh, they say that there is uh, actually two years. And I have in the Hebrew calendar, it's actually two years. And there it's one year each of six months that make up the one year. And the Hebrew calendar consists of 29 point uh, four or five days or something so it's half it's a uh, it's about point seven point eight or so uh, of a day shorter than the Enoch calendar so it loses more time more rapidly and because we have the um, the Hebrew calendar you can have 27 days that's just the average of what the Hebrew calendar is because the, 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 the last week, there's three weeks that stay the same. See, the Hebrew calendar works on days. It doesn't work uh, uh, on, on numbers, not on the, the names, not on days. So that's why you cannot keep a Sabbath with the Hebrew calendar if it's Saturday. Like, you can't do every Saturday in the Hebrew calendar and be on the Sabbath. 
You cannot follow Sabbath. You'll probably follow it maybe twice a month, uh, or a year rather. Two, maybe three, I, th I would say at the most, because your chances are about one in four for the Sabbath to remain, to have a 28-day. So, for example, the Gregorian calendar that we use, if we were to have a Sabbath, follow the Sabbath, it would have to be 28 days every single day, and then the leap year, you know, or what? because we, we go by that calendar as well, where we have to have the uh, one day added to the leap year to make uh, every four years to get our calendar adjusted back to the winter solstice, to the, uh, the the beginning of the fall and the beginning of the summer, you know, the summer solstice and and uh, mark mark those days that way, those seasons. That's great. It works great. Now, but with the Hebrew calendar, uh, God did it a different way. You see, and so if if the Hebrew calendar loses, it, it, let's say. Uh, it, they say the Hebrew calendar loses average between 10 or 11 days a year. If that is true or not, I, I you know I really don't know, but it seems if it, it's accurate. But if it's uh, 29.4 something days, this one website says that it loses approximately 21, or uh, is approximately 29. Point, I think it was four or five days per month. That's what it averages. So it would lose, you know, if we were to take that, that number, uh, let's say we, we, we go to 0.7 uh, times 12, it says 8.4 days. And so if they lose 8.4 days, for example, uh, every year, so 8.4, let's say times 3 equals 25.2 days. So every three years, they would add a month and to bring it back so what what my understanding what I my searching when I was doing the the reports was that the calendar loses approximately 10 or 11 days per year so the Sabbath can land you know anywhere within a four-day period more or less and so that's the average that uh, they're giving so the uh, so it loses they're saying it loses about 11 days, 10 or 11 days per year. So after 2.7 months, years, they add a month because it, it knocks off the seasons. So they, they want the lambing season to begin on the Passover. And I'm really up for correction on this. I really am. Uh, however, it makes a lot of sense to me um, that God, God definitely wants to keep the seasons proper. Because Nisan is the first, you said is the first year, first month of the year for you. Okay, so that's my understanding. And so if I go biblically, the Passover is always at the first of the month on the 14th day of that month is when they slaughter the lamb. On the 10th day is when they, they collect the lamb for themselves. They keep it for four days, that and then they inspect it, and then they slaughter it, and then they and then they eat it. That's when they came out of Egypt. And then you have 50 days to the, to wheat and barley, which is Pentecost. And Jesus fulfilled that. And then from there, you have the early grapes. After Pentecost, this would be like uh, uh, the uh, the ripe figs in August. And and then you would have uh, the, the Day of Atonement. Okay, and then after the Day of Atonement, right, you have the latter grapes, the early grapes, the latter grapes. And then you have, the, this would be the, the uh, civil year for the Gentiles, the six months. And then you have the, uh, the December, Chislev is December, is snow, and it's Hanukkah, dedication. And then you have uh, Tabeth, the 10th day of the month, January is the grass after rain. And then 11th is February, the winter figs. And then in the 12th of Adar is the almond blossoms, the feast of Easter is the Purim. And the almond blossoms is also the, the rod of Aaron that blossomed uh, out of all those other rods when they had that, that uh, rebellion. And uh, God said, okay, well, I'm going to choose between the priesthood of Aaron and the priesthood of everybody else, Moses said. So we'll, put the, we'll put your bring all your staffs, we'll put them over here, and we'll see which one God chooses. And in the day after they found that it was the rod of Aaron, 
that budded. Okay, that's the with almonds. It was an almond, and that is in the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, so you see that the Hebrew calendar is is accurate also. It's a very accurate calendar, but they have to go by the new moons. They have to go by the... So what would happen is that the three weeks stay the same. You have um, Sabbath, seven days, Sabbath, seven days, Sabbath, seven days, Sabbath. And then the next Sabbath, there could be two Sabbaths. Back. That's why you have the high Sabbath. You have the Sabbath and the high Sabbath. Um, you, or you would just have a Sabbath. So if the next Sabbath would be the 28th day, but if, if the full moon appears before that, then the Sabbath would be on the sixth day. The sixth day would turn into the seventh day. And then, or if the Sabbath would be on the 29th day, then there would be a Sabbath and then a Sabbath. It would be like a long weekend. And so that's what they were doing. Uh, they were mixing the, the Sabbath days, making one Sabbath day more, uh, you know, move a Sabbath day closer to the weekend. We'll, we'll call this the Sabbath day, right? And everybody can have, you know, a good a good party. And that, they were doing that as well. So they did abuse the Hebrew calendar. Uh, however, the Hebrew calendar is astonishing. And I have it here in the report. I don't possibly take the time to do it another time. Uh, but um, it's it, it would take me time. Like, uh, you know, I, I move slow when it comes to these type of... Uh, prophecies and because I want to be accurate and I don't want to make any mistakes so um, you know it's like even you know God God does things in in ways that uh, really keep the creation honest you know for example you know even Paul Paul himself he wasn't a very strong teacher he wasn't a very he was a strong teacher but he wasn't very well orchestrated in speech. He says that even though I'm not the best speaker, he says even though I don't have the utterance, you know, I'm not, uh, I am well versed. I know what I'm talking about. So he didn't have the the, the gift of the gab, as you would say. He wasn't like, uh, he wasn't able to uh, speak uh, as well as many. He says, I may not be the best speaker, but he says, I, I, I do have the knowledge. You see, that's what's important. So, however, um, you know, I'm always... Uh, I'm not, I don't reckon myself as, as, as in the same category as Paul. Uh, however, I am willing, I am always open to correction all the time. I'm always open to correction. And uh, I, I, I apologize for anything that I'd say that is wrong. And I, I take what is right and I throw out what is not right. And then I incorporate that in my, in my studies. Now, I can, I can get into, it's, you know, the, uh, the report is here regarding... Uh, the different the, the scriptures that is regarding the Passovers and and the Hebrew calendar. Okay, maybe we can read just a little bit here. Uh, in Leviticus twenty three five. To see just how wonderful this the um, the Hebrew calendar really is. It's, it's from God and, and and God designed it to save souls. That's what it's all about. And uh, in, in, it, it, this report is, really brings it out. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And Leviticus 23.5 says, um, in verse 5, uh, In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, in the evening, is the Lord's Passover. So in Leviticus 23.5, the Passover feast is performed on the fourteenth day of the first month of the Hebrew calendar year. It's April and also Abib in, in the Hebrew. And Leviticus 23, 6 begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, on the first day, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work. Uh, and on the 15th day of the same month is the, is, the feast of unleavened, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then seven Sabbaths is 94 days I have here. And then seven days equals the 49 days. Um... In Leviticus 23.8 is the first covenant, Ezekiel. Okay, so this gets Ezekiel 40 to 40, 14 to 15, 60% pillar of fire is the halfway mark offering of the soul to God. 
Okay, see Hosea 7, chapter 8. Also see Ezekiel chapter 14, elect temples, CERN, Jade Helm connection, part 1, report. So this is, and so it says here, uh, on the 50th day is the first fruits, wheat and barley harvest in the month of June. Sivan, third month. Soon after Pentecost, um, for the third age, uh, spiritual blood covenant, Israel. Okay, so um, once again, I have, to, I have to go over all of these scriptures. Uh, in Leviticus 23, 11 to 10, so in Leviticus 23, says, verse 6, And on the 15th day, the same month, the Feast of Leaven, uh, unleavened bread to the Lord. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. So the, uh, and then seven Sabbaths. Okay, so this begins, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so the seven is, is 50 days, so this begins the seven, uh, the seven years, the seven Sabbaths. So the, what this is saying is after, just have to follow this specific uh, teaching because there's a lot of things happening here. In Leviticus 23, 8, Okay, so that's in, this is all in brackets here, but so in Leviticus 23, 6 begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread and then seven Sabbaths, 49 days, and on the 50th day is the first fruits, the wheat and barley harvest in the month of June. Okay, and so that's what happened. Jesus Christ was on the cross, and then after 50 days after he was he was murdered, he went, he he began, he, he put down the Holy Spirit. And that was the 50th day. It was on the past of the Pentecost. So that's the Hebrew calendar. Okay. Being fulfilled. So Jesus fulfilled the Hebrew calendar in every month. So that's just an example of what, of what, of God upholding, you see, his count, uh, that why he gave this, this specific covenant to the covenant children is because it's a soul harvesting covenant. And as he, in, in Ecclesiastes, um, King Solomon says that there's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time to cast away stones. There's a time to gather stones. There's a time to reap. There's a time to sow. There's a time for everything under the sun. So in Leviticus 23, 11 to 10 is the Pentecost and he shall wave the sheep before the Lord that you may find acceptance unto, on the morrow after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it and on the day when you wave the sheep you shall offer a male lamb a year old without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord and a cereal offering so this is all explained in this report Leviticus 23 11 to 10 11 to 10, uh, 10 to 11, is the first fruit wheat and barley harvest we now call Pentecost that takes place 50 days after Passover. Okay. And so, so once you have, once again, you have the 10th of the ephah is of the cereal offering. And once again, that is the finger of God. So that's the disciples when they received the, the cereal, when they received the Spirit on, on the day of Pentecost. And it was also a, uh, their offering the... Um, the... Um, Offering the, uh, the the wave offering, right? The wave offering to the Lord. It's when they take the palm branches, and they, they it's a wave offering. It's an odor given to God. Well, the disciples, you know, they they they, they were speaking the oracles of God. They were, the Holy Spirit was working through them now, 
And so that, that's the offering, the fruit of our lips. So this is, that's just a very quick uh, example. This goes into the Tabernacle of Moses. This goes into um, the Day of Atonement, uh, offering of, of, of the soul um, in Leviticus 23, 24, 25. Um, Say the people of Israel, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with blasts of trumpets and a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work, and you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. And once again, that is the, uh, the that's the Gentiles. You know, like that's the the offering by fire. What does God want? He says to those who bring many to righteousness, right? They they will shine as a firmament forever and ever and ever. So that's that's uh, the uh, that's just a quick going over of, of what this what 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 the Hebrew calendar is, and this goes right. This report explains the Hebrew calendar right to the last month, the month of Adar. So uh, the Hebrew calendar is wonderful. It's amazing. It's not that the calendar is bad. It's the works that were done in the calendar, you know, that that uh, really, uh, you know, gives gives it a bad name. You see, that's that's uh, what it is. So, um, but the information that that uh, the Holy Spirit that is within the calendar, you know. Is, is things that uh, you know not everybody understands. They they don't they don't uh, you know the Bible's in the Bible says in the latter days that people they will they will uh, not adhere to sound doctrines. They will fall away. You know and that's what happened to this covenant as well. You know they fell away uh, because the um, the powers of darkness drew them away from the from the covenant from from their God from the Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope you're edified. God bless you. I would take comments on this, you know, if anybody can help me regarding this. Um, the month of Adar, uh, the added month of Adar, it seems to be causing a problem. I don't understand what it is. I don't understand what the problem is. I mean, maybe they're, uh, I don't know. I really don't know uh, what the difficulty is with the Hebrew calendar. I, I, I think it's a, a, you know, maybe I, I'm not understanding it properly. The month of Adar, uh, the sacred year, the civil year. Uh, however, we certainly have 12 months, so we certainly have a midway mark. And it's the Day of Atonement that is the marriage. You know, it is uh, when all of Israel gets purged, you know, of their sins, the entire nation. So... Uh, the first day, once again, the first day is on the 25th. I just want to read it just for my, my own uh, understanding. It says here, on the first day of the seventh month. See, it says here, to say to the people of Israel, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest. So this this is like the from the... From the, the it's right between the the last day, the sixth month and the seventh month. That's amazing. Now I understand the Enoch calendar. The twenty third of September, I think, was was uh, between the the sixth and seventh. The sixth month, what was it? The seventh month and the sixth day. And so. Today's the 24th. We're so according to Enoch calendar, we're on, we're in the seventh day of the seventh month, and then tomorrow, September 25th, we're in the eighth day of the seventh month. I think that's astounding, because that's when the sacrifice is supposed to be going up in the Mount of Olives. So we have the seventh and the eighth king. So and um, I think that's astonishing. I think those are signs.